Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. Today we're out at the Dan River Business Development Center in the Ringgold Industrial Park. Of course this center uh, is a joint project between the city and county, kind of an incubator for small businesses here in the region. And on today's show we're celebrating uh, one of these companies, Titan Bioenergy Systems, is unveiling their new pilot scale tobacco extractor. And on today's show, we're going to talk about how this extractor will produce uh, oils, sugars, and proteins that will be used in biofuels and different agricultural processes in the future. So who knows, tobacco that's grown here in our region or through this extractor can maybe fuel your vehicle one day. Now this is different than the type of the tobacco that's been grown for years and years here in our community. And on today's show, we'll hear from the president of Titan Bioenergy Systems to talk about the, the type of tobacco that will be grown here in our region that will be used in this extractor to produce all those different items that I, I mentioned earlier. We'll also hear from Todd Haymore, who's the Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry for the state of Virginia. He was on hand for the announcement. He'll talk about the state's involvement. We'll also hear from the president of Titan Biosystems during that press conference, and he'll also walk us through the process so you'll get a better understanding of just how we go from the field to the extractor here behind us. So let's take you out now to the ceremony and we'll hear from the Executive Director of the Dan River Business Development Center. My name is Ralph Hogg and I'm the Director of Operations out here. And uh, the event today with uh, uh, Titan uh, Biosystems, uh, excuse me, Bioenergy Systems, is a very important one. I was telling somebody just a few minutes ago about this process uh, to find it in a simple way. When they came here and started operations in August of 2012, they had a concept, an idea, and the, it was proven technology. But believe it or not, and you'll hear more of today and you'll see it, that it's grown exponentially. And it's gonna be a, a very good thing for the, uh, uh, for the local economy. It's one of three companies, but I, I do wanna welcome you here to the Dan River Business Development Center. Uh, a couple of notes on that uh, item there. This center was built due to the uh, efforts of a lot of local people, the Board of Supervisors, which I'm glad we have the membership here today, the City Council as well, as well as other community and business leaders came together back in the late 90s and came up with this idea. This building was open in uh, April of 2001. And the way I measure success is, is not too different from what I think we do as an economy here. The number of jobs that have been created by the companies that have come through here is 2,300 jobs. And of the companies that have, we call that come through our doors that stay here and go out in our community and build plants and businesses, uh, about 84% of those are still in business today. So that's our success and I think uh, Titan as well as the other companies here will continue to add to that. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Majorowski, who is the president and CEO of Titan Bioenergy Systems. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Uh, sorry it's a little bit warm. Um, this feels a little bit like we're throwing ourselves our own birthday party. And when you put out invites, you don't know who's going to show up, and you're afraid, what if nobody comes to my own birthday party? But uh, you all came, and, and we very much appreciate that. Um, this is a big day for us because we're going to show you some of our equipment, but specifically our extractor. And it's a, it's a major milestone and a long journey, and I hope to share a little bit of that journey for you. If you don't know, uh, Titan Bioenergy Systems is reimagining tobacco as a new source, an economical source for sugars, oils, proteins, and a byproduct called biochar. And we started this uh, several years ago out of a vaccine technology foundation in Philadelphia where they were looking at plants and saying, how can we make them factories for vaccines? Well, they had the idea to use that know-how and apply that to make a ideal non-food crop for biofuels. And they looked at a variety of different plants and chose tobacco because tobacco is the most widely grown non-food crop in the world. It grows in over 125 countries. It's very adaptable to different climates. And it also can grow places where traditional row crops cannot. So they worked on that and were able to do their first patents and we built the company and we needed to find a home. And so that journey starts with us looking at Missouri, one of the big plant science uh, states in, in, the, in the country. We also went to Kentucky. We also went to Richmond, where we met our guest of honor, Secretary Haymore. And Secretary Haymore said, if you're working with tobacco, you have to go to Danville. And so here we are, we came to Danville. We met uh, Linda Green, who at the time was the director here, and Delegate Danny Marshall, and they were the final pieces in the puzzle that convinced us this was the right place to be. 
Well, now that we were situated here, we realized we were pretty smart in the laboratory, but we needed to have practical know-how. So we started working with Virginia Tech and Dr. David Reed, a tobacco agronomist there, on how to grow our tobacco for energy purposes versus traditional smoking tobacco. We also worked with some of the best area growers, many of them I think I saw here today, who have helped us a lot in learning how to grow our tobacco, and they probably will tell me I still have a little more to learn. Uh, but they've been phenomenal partners, and it's just an extension of how great Danville's been for us and our business. The third piece of our technology is how do you take that tobacco and turn it into those products, those sugars, those oils, those proteins? And we looked at a hydrothermal technology, and we looked around the country who was best at doing this. And by very good luck and chance, uh, Professor Sandeep Kumar, who's here today, and I hope you get to meet him, from Old Dominion University, Norfolk, was one of the country experts in this field. So we started working with him with our scientists, and now we have several patents that led to this world-class machine we're very proud to show you today. Now this machine is, is, is by far better than anything that's out there right now because it uses water as its active ingredient. It's a very clean process, it's a fast process, and it's a continuous process, and there's no waste. So from a life cycle assessment or a CO2 assessment, it's a fantastic product. So we're very proud to show you that today. Um, Without further ado, uh, I think we're coming full circle by having Secretary Haymore here to celebrate this milestone. As you know, he's a son of Danville, and he's very proud of this area, and if it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you very much for being here. I look forward to showing you around and introducing you to our team that made this possible. Secretary Haymore, thank you. Uh, Peter, thank you. Um, it is uh, great, great to be home. This is two days in a row. Thank Jerry Gwaltney for that. Mom and Dad really appreciate it too. I got to, you know, anytime I can come home uh, uh, to visit Mom and Dad is always great, but anytime I can come home to talk business and uh, particularly uh, business that's related to uh, tobacco is, makes it even better. Um, Ralph, congratulations on everything you all are doing here. And, and again, uh, thanks for playing host to uh, not only Titan, but others here as you look to incubate and develop uh, more opportunities in the future for job creation back home. Peter and your entire team, uh, you're very, very kind to um, talk about uh, the role that uh, I may have played in helping you come here. Um, I remember the meeting that we had uh, in the governor's office uh, back in the early part of the McDonald administration, um, and we talked about what you were doing. And I remember thinking at that time, wow. What better place in the Commonwealth of Virginia than Danville, Pennsylvania County, this entire area, to locate a potential new use, new multiple uses of leaf tobacco uh, than this than area right here? It just made such sense, and I'm really grateful to you and your, and your partners and everyone involved in making the decision to locate here. Uh, we can tell people all the time about different regions of the state in which they, we believe they should locate. And it's the old cliche about leading a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, fortunately, uh, Peter and the team not only came here, uh, but they liked what they saw. And I know from the entire team here in Danville, Pennsylvania County region working together uh, was the reason that you're located here. And obviously with the infrastructure and leaf tobacco and the farmers uh, and everything else that goes on here in, in Southern Virginia, uh, it was the right decision. And I know that you will um, be very, very grateful that you made it years and years to come, uh, as I, I'm sure the rest of the locality uh, will as well. Um, you know, we're talking a great deal these days about bio, and um, the, it seems to be one of the leading um, industries uh, for the future. Uh, there's so many things that are uh, to be discovered, undiscovered uh, out there that can lead to new opportunities and job creation. Uh, so the fact that the governor, about a year and a half ago, uh, decided that because Virginia was not recognized as one of the top bio states in America, in fact, we weren't even in the top 25, we were in the very, very bottom tier of the category as far as bio industry, biotechnology industry is concerned, uh, we got to change that. And we recognize that it's not going to happen in a four-year gubernatorial administration, but you can do things to set the stage for the future. And yesterday, at the Institute, we had uh, the governor's uh, conference on ag and biotechno industri industrial biotechnology, and an overwhelming success. Absolutely uh, exceeded all expectation. The buzz is there. 
everyone is excited, not just here in Southside, but around the state. And we had people travel as far away as Illinois, Connecticut, to be in Danville for this conference that took place yesterday. So uh, tying really, really nicely together for what we're doing here today and learning more about what Titan's going to do with this leaf tobacco that's going to help shape the future, not only for jobs and economic development, but uh, future uses for uh, obviously one of the oldest crops that we have in this nation and the state. You think about it, the country was founded, it was founded on leaf tobacco, the Jamestown settlement. Some of the first exports back to Mother England were leaf tobacco. Our founding fathers grew it. Uh, it was used as currency. And all the things that have gone on over the course of the 200 plus years to today, and tobacco is still, leaf tobacco is still thriving. Uh, we have solid investment here in the region from Japanese tobacco. And Steve Daniels is here. Uh, the, the leaf that's being uh, procured and processed here in Danville is going all around the world. It's one of our top exports out of Virginia. And I think everyone here knows, the governor has said repeatedly, he said it multiple times yesterday, that he wants Virginia to be the East Coast capital for agricultural and forestry exports. We're number two right now. We jumped over North Carolina. Last year we had an all-time record high, $3.35 billion in ag and forestry exports. This product at some point in the future can probably play a role in that growing export market. But my point is, traditional leaf tobacco is still an important part of the economy, but now we're going to be looking at future uses, new uses of tobacco. They're going to give growers like Robert Mills, a person I've known all my life, Robert's actually farmed uh, our family farm, uh, give him new opportunities not only to produce traditional tobacco that's going into the global marketplace, but leaf that's going to be used potentially to create biofuels, fertilizers, who knows, vaccines, drugs for the future. I think the possibilities are endless based on what I know, my very small, simple brain. It was said repeatedly yesterday, Jerry, you, saw, you heard it. I wish, a lot of us wish we had paid more attention in biology class back in high school and college uh, because we are uh, uh, seeing so much going on that may be going over our heads to a certain degree. But this is a great, great opportunity for Southside Virginia. It's a great opportunity for Danville, Pennsylvania County. And as I've discussed with some of my friends from North Carolina, Lauren Fisher and I were talking this morning, the spillover um, for North Carolina's benefits as well. And I think we agreed yesterday with the discussions that we had at the, at the Ag Bio Conference that um, we're hoping that with North Carolina's solid infrastructure and biotechnology, our emerging sector in biotechnology, that we could create this this pathway, this highway between Raleigh and Richmond going right through Danville to help grow this great bio industry that we know has so much potential, not only for, again, the region, but the entire state. So thank you again for allowing me to come home for a few hours to be a part of this, particularly um, dealing with the crop. Uh, a lot of you know uh, I grew up in, grew up on my grandparents' family farm. My grandfather was one of the top tobacco producers in this region. Um, I worked in the leaf tobacco industry for Diamond for a number of years and then Universal Leaf Tobacco in Richmond. So uh, leaf tobacco is in my blood and I'm excited about the future not only of traditional use of tobacco but I'm probably just as excited about these future opportunities which Titan is going to be uh, leading the cutting edge on. So thank you again Peter and your entire team for having me. Congratulations and look forward to coming back for hopefully a lot of new successes in the future. Thanks again for having me. We take fresh tobacco. We don't need to cure it. We actually do a mid-season uh, cut, usually in mid-July, uh, depending on uh, the concentration of sugars. Um, in this first process, we press it fresh. And what we're doing is we're separating out to tobacco juice, which already has a lot of uh, free sugars and proteins that we use. That's going in one of those tanks on the side over there. And the rest is what we call the cake. And that cake gets blown through that wall into the extractor, the machine that we're gonna show you next. So we, um, we took our technology and we looked at a lot of different varieties of tobacco that grow regionally because they do well in this environment. But we also looked at uh, tobacco plants that were sort of discarded by the traditional industry and they were discarded mainly because they didn't have the right flavor characteristics or, or nicotine levels. But for us, those things don't matter. All we care about is maximum biomass per acre. So our tobacco is usually a little bit larger. In fact, we have uh, a next generation variety that we're using that gets to about 10 to 12 feet. So it's a very 
big tobacco plant and helps us a lot in improving the economics uh, for the farmer on that one acre plot. And this is, this table kind of helps trace the products. So, you know, we start with this leaf. When we squeeze it through that press, you get that juice that I talked about, which has the proteins and sugars. You can see what the proteins look like here. You can actually smell these. It smells like a protein powder you would put in a, in a supplement of some sort. Um, then we take that remaining cake and we put it into the extractor, which is behind me there. Um, when that goes through the extractor process, we get uh, a sugar water and we also get oil. And then you can take that sugar water, which is actually right, I'll, I'll find it. Um, <laughs> And we sell it to ethanol factories that they want to make bioethanol. We can sell them to biodiesel uh, refineries if they want to make biodiesel. Uh, oil could also go in for animal feed. Uh, we're testing the proteins right now for, uh, for hogs, for their nutritional diet. And whatever is left over, we turn into a product that's called biochar. Uh, it, it's green coal is another name for it. It looks like charcoal. And the beautiful thing about biochar is that it's a great soil amendment. It goes right back on the land. So any carbon that's left over is, that was pulled out of the air and put into the plant is put back onto the land. So it's very good from a carbon dioxide life cycle uh, a point of view. But it's also very good because biochar improves the productivity of land. It makes uh, water absorption better. And it also uh, traps all the kind of good bacteria that makes land more productive. If you go to uh, the Amazon, they put biochar several thousands of years ago to make the land productive and it's still very productive from using biochar. And uh, over here is an example of us uh, actually doing fermentation. So um, this is at a lab scale where we're doing a, a blend of 20% tobacco sugars, 80% corn sugars. This is an experiment um, to demonstrate basically to the traditional corn ethanol industry that you can co-mix the streams. So a uh, biorefinery that's making ethanol traditionally in the United States uses corn. There's uh, over 200 of them. Uh, there's one here in Virginia, Virial. Um, they're using corn right now. So we'd like to uh, show them that they can use our tobacco sugars and, and get uh, even better economics doing that. This is the extractor. Uh, the extractor is capable of doing about 12 tons per day. Um, we tons uh, tobacco per day. Um, what you saw outside in that cake comes into this tank here, uh, where if we need to add water, we add water. Um, I'm going to very oversimplify this technology, but think of it like a big pressure cooker. When water is not allowed to escape to gas uh, and is under certain pressure and temperatures, it acts almost like a solvent, and it breaks up the tobacco, and it separates it out to the sugars and to the oils, which uh, come out over here into these tanks. Your active ingredient is water. You're not using uh, harsh acids. And a lot of that has to do with tobacco naturally um, has much lower lignin than switchgrass or some of the other non-food crops people have tried to use. So this is kind of a milder process. Um, but but tobacco lends itself well to that milder process. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of the City Update. Some very exciting news coming out of the Dan River Business Development Center here in the Ringgold Industrial Park. Again, Titan Bioenergy Systems introducing this new tobacco extractor. New uses for tobacco. Who would have ever thought we could be using uh, the sugars and proteins uh, from the tobacco leaf to fuel our vehicles? But that seems like something that is uh, going to be coming down the road in the very near future, all happening right here in uh, the Danville, Pennsylvania County area. So until next week, have a great day.